Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dion. This is Chapstick Candy Cane Scented and Flavored. I picked it at random. What's on my face right now? I'm rude. I'm sorry. Hello. Hi. If this is your first time here, don't let that deter you from coming back. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for clicking to see this video. You see from the title what we're using. Um, I still don't know what I'm going to do. But what's on my face right now? I'm just like, what? The Fenty Brow Pencil. And I might stop saying this because this is the only brow product I use that I've been using for years. We have on the Pat Primer. We have on the Pat Foundation. I wear shade M18. And no, I don't like how my under eyes are looking. I did also put on the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Flawless Wear Concealer. The shade is 4N. So that's under my eyes and this area of my nose that's usually red. And then what did I do? I went in with the Hourglass Mineral Veil. It's not Mineral Veil. Translucent Troll. You know you can read. Why are you acting like you can't read? Veil Translucent <laughs> Setting Powder from Hourglass. We went in with the Esom palette and we did the same thing that we've been doing. Starting from this one and just working our way down. Yeah, I'm using that palette. <clears throat> Excuse me. For the rest of the face, we just used Elephant. Usually I use this in conjunction with Tiger, but we used it just by itself today. We use this shade as under eye setting powder. We use this as a highlight. We use this as a blush. We use this as a contour slash bronzer. And just to say we used everything in here, I did take this blush, but that's only just right here. And it is deeper then this one, you may not even be able to tell. But if you're, if it's looking like you see color here but not here, this right here is this blush. Mm -hmm. And we use this as an all-over finishing powder. I did not spray the face because I'm debating on whether or not to use Radiant Light for under eye and for just to finish my face again, even though Dim Light is what we have on now because I'm just not liking how my under eyes are looking. Um, that is everything on my face right now. So, <sighs> the concept of the crazy troll nation, the crazy just enjoying the videos that you do, enjoying the channels that you watch here on YouTube. The troll part is not, <sighs> good grief, I'm scraping this primer. The troll part is not caring too much <laughs> about the beauty community standard. You set the standard for yourself. When you're watching beauty related content and all the new releases and people telling you how to get this look, how to get that look, you need to use this tool, you need to use that brand, try not to feel like that. Use whatever brand, tool, or technique you want to to get your makeup on in a way that you are satisfied with it. Because what you think of yourself is way more important than what other people think about you. Know that you rock. Here at the Crazy Show Nation, we believe in self acceptance and self love, embracing your natural features. Enhancing them if you want to, when you want to, but never feeling like you have to. You know what I'm saying? Love yourself for who you are and for how you look, even without face paint on. That's what we stand for here. We know we are the mom. So when I say troll, it's a good thing. Troll meaning not caring what other people say, accepting who you are, loving you for who you are, and just rocking whatever you want to rock and walking around like you're the ish because you really are. Thank you. You're welcome. So that was weird. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I have to let you know if you do here. <laughs> I do curse on my channel sometimes because I curse sometimes, period. I do try to catch myself. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. This primer, y'all, is done. And I did purchase. I do have a backup. But since this one's almost done, this is the perfect opportunity for me, <clears throat> excuse me, to try a primer that I have been curious about since it first launched, but I didn't want to pay for it because for me, the Fenty one is tried and true. I've been using it for years. And so even if I'm curious about a new eye primer, I'm like, why are you playing, girl? You know you love the Fenty one. But I do think once I do finally trash this one, which it has been done, but I keep acting like it's not done, as you see, I am going to try at least one new primer, maybe two before I open up a new Fenty one. And so I'm excited about that. But there's something going on right now. Today is October 2nd. There's something I'm nervous about and it's not makeup related. So as much as I say I'm here for the makeups and for the comedy shows and old school hip hop videos, um, yeah, I'm gonna talk about something that I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I am, I am nervous, like seriously. 
Not because of this though. This is Natasha Denona Trio Chrome Palette. These three shades in the middle are from Heather Austin Adept Cosmetics Palette. I did do the first time, I only used this palette I think three times, maybe four, I think three. And I did one look, one eye with this is the top row and one look the other eye with this row. And these two shades that were in here irritated my lids. And so I never used the one that was at the bottom. I took them out. A friend of mine gifted me um, an empty palette. So I put them in the empty palette, put them on Macari, and they sold. And so I'm thinking, what can I put here that looks like it belongs in this palette? And I'm like, oh, Heather Austin shadows. Surprisingly or not, I have not even used these shadows with this palette yet. But I really did like the looks that I did pairing... Um, I think two shadows from this row and two shadows from this row, one on each eye, I think, with the Mothman palette, because that palette only has two mattes in it. And so these went really well with that. And what surprised me is that this, this, this did not look ashy on me. And that's that was my concern when I first purchased this, or when I was looking at it, like, mm, them kind of tones made me look ashy, and they did not. And I'm like, oh, and I love the Natasha Denona Creamy Matte Cream to Powder formula, and her mattes too, for that matter. But... So i would never used this bottom row. Again, I've never used these three in here since I put them in this palette, but I've never used these two shades. I never used these two. So we're gonna do that today. Y'all know I like color. Y'all know I like smoke. Y'all know I like swamp water. Y'all know I like messy grunge. What are we gonna do with, with these two in this one? I'm acting like this is a live and I'm waiting to see comments of y'all answering. Because I'm really... <laughs> what the hell? But anyway, so I think... Even if I'm thinking this second half of the lid, first half of the lid, inner corner. And even if I do this for brow bone, that's kind of bright compared to these two. I don't know, but we're going to just... We're going to put them on. I have our Fenty brushes. I have our four of the number 230 brushes. And for blending, which I don't think I'm going to use it. Um, is the 210 brush. This is the, the stubby one. <clears throat> so we're just going to put these on and see. So this is going to be very different for me because these are not shades I just use. And in person, it does look a little deeper. Is this what I'm seeing in person? I think it's looking a little deeper in person. Let's just get to it. Um, so we're going to take... Garmin, this shade here. As I said, I have not used these, this row at all. We're going to see how they show up uh, or not. <laughs> Why am I laughing so goofy? I'm nervous about tomorrow because last night, well, this morning, because I'm nocturnal, I think I went to sleep at like 9 o'clock this morning. So it was maybe like around 3 a.m. No, 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 no. It was just after midnight. I was eating my um, my kettle corn salt and vinegar chips, the ones that I posted on Instagram. And kettle kettle cooked chips are crunchier than regular chips. So I'm like, and all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, y'all. One of my fillings came out, and it's a huge filling. The back tooth all the way in the back over here. I don't have my wisdoms. They were taken out when I was, I think, in my mid-20s. And so, but the last tooth, the back on the bottom, it had a huge filling in it. And last year, the filling fell out. And it was old. It was like a 15-year-old filling. It, it fell out. And because the filling was so huge, I'm like, how the hell are they going to fix this? Because <laughs> I'm like, this is like the whole tooth. <laughs> and so he did fill it. And he did say his concern was that because the filling was so huge. Because, you know, when if you've had a filling, for those of you who, who've never had cavities, never had fillings, I'm living vicariously through you. Almost every tooth in my mouth has a filling. When I was a kid, I was raised in the 70s. I was born December 1969. And that's when they had penny candy stores. They would give you one of those brown sandwich bags, an empty one, and just fill it up. And it might be like a dollar worth of candy. Y'all, I lived in that store. And <laughs> my grandfather... I am really off on a memory here. He passed away years and years and years ago. But growing up, when I was old enough to like do chores and do things, he would pay me a quarter. Now this is going way back to like the 70s and 80s. And he would eat dinner sometimes in his bedroom. 
And so, and he called me Cookie. So that was his nickname for me. He had a nickname for almost everybody in the family, which I really thought was like, wow, that's kind of cool. Like, what does that mean? Where did that come from? But anyway, yeah, so I was Grandpa's little cookie. And he would pay me a quarter <laughs> to bring him his dinner. Y'all, that next day, I was at the Penny Candy Store. You know how much candy you can get for 25 cents back then? If you remember Penny Candy Stores, let me know. And it was in someone's, I don't know if it was like her laundry room or whatever, but it was like shelves on the wall and it had like um, the plastic cases, well, plastic containers, and each one had a different candy in it. And then it was like licorice um, vines and like just whatever in the world you could think of, it was in her in her room, in that laundry room on the shelf. And everything was a penny and some stuff was like, you know, 10 for a penny. So that little sandwich bag that she would give you, it would be full of just a quarter's worth of stuff. Like it was ridiculous and I would eat it. And so my, yeah, my teeth weren't good. And by me being so sensitive, I hated going to the dentist. I got anal about my teeth. I think I was maybe my mid twenties. Um, I had pain somewhere. I went to the dentist. I found a dentist who specialized in children's dentistry because I knew I didn't like going to the dentist. <clears throat> Listen, y'all, this is true. I had 10 fillings and needed a root canal. I was like, so every two weeks, I had an appointment like clockwork. When I would leave, they were like, two weeks, same time, same place, yup. And since then, that's when I became anal about my teeth. You know, rinsing with pre-rinse, flossing, using Listerine, brushing my teeth two, three times a day. Because I'm like, that ain't happening again. And so a lot of my feelings are like super old. And when I was in the military, I ne needed another root canal. But the dentist tells me, even though I'm like, almost every tooth has a feeling. He's like, but you have all your roots though. And he said, and that's good because then it doesn't change your structure. Like when you start pulling teeth or when they start pulling teeth, sometimes your roots can shift and then you end up with gaps and things like that. So he always tells me it's good. And for my checkups, I always get ones and zeros. Zeros are like the best for teeth and gum health. And four is like the worst. And so I always get like ones and zeros. And so my, my dental health is good, even with all the fillings. And so he always tells me that because I'm like, oh, I got all these fillings. And he's like, but you have all your roots. The structure's good. Your gum health is good, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, this filling that came out, I'm like, I don't know how he's going to fill it. Because the back part of the tooth is almost gone. Like I can feel the, the tooth along the gum line. But how your teeth are square, there's no back part of the tooth, like above the gum line. And he had said before that he would fill it, but his concern was that because when they remove, even if a filling falls out, when they have to remove whatever's left, they have to make sure they get, you know, if, if, if there's decay underneath the filling, especially older fillings, they have to dig all of that out before they put a new filling in it. And so he had said, you know, if, if he said, I'm going to do my best to make sure I can fill it. But his concern was that because above the gum line towards the back, there's not a lot of enamel there. So he was like, I'll do what I can. <laughs> and, you know, without having to do a root canal <clears throat> or send me out to do a root canal because they don't do them at the VA hospital. But he was able to feel it. And there were times when if I would bite down, I would feel pressure back there. So that should have told me something was wrong. So sometimes I would feel pressure if I clenched and sometimes I wouldn't. And, but when it fell out last night, I'm like, that's a big ass feeling. I'm just like, and so it was like 1230 in the morning. I messaged the VA, the dental clinic. And I said, you know, emergency appointment, please. You know, I've, that last feeling I had filled, that was huge. <clears throat> you know, the feeling fell out. I, I don't have any sensation. I'm not feeling, you know, hot or cold which is good. So I'm going away in a couple of weeks. I would like to have this taken care of before I go away. And I don't want to wait until I have sensation. We're going to take this shade here. I'm kind of thinking to do this one though. Because this one looks like it's going to be bright. We're going to do this one and then put this. And if this is like super bright, no, we're going to do this. Let me just do it. Okay. Diatonic. That's this shade. And so someone, we're going back to the first brush, not adding, but we're just putting here because this side looks like it's straight this way and this side looked like it was on an angle. Um, <clears throat> someone called me today and I'm just like, oh, she's like, I'm calling you to schedule your appointment. Can you come in tomorrow at 11 o'clock? And I'm like, yes, I can. 
<laughs> and I know I'm going to be there quite a while because the dental clinic is always crowded. I think they overbook. That clinic, I don't think, is open every day. I think they do overbook. Because even if they book me for like 8 o'clock, they might not get to me until like 8.40. And they'll be like, oh, we have three people scheduled for that dentist at 8 o'clock. And I'm like... And I, I understand it because sometimes people don't show up. So if nobody shows up, you just take the next person. But it turns into whoever gets there first. That's the one they call first. And so when she said 11 o'clock, I thought, I'm going to be there all freaking day. But then I'm like, I'll be there at 11. I'm going to try and get there at like 10. So at least. But then still, even if I get there at 10, if they have a 10 o'clock appointment, they're going to take the 10 o'clock appointment before me. Unless that person is late. And late isn't until like 15 minutes after your appointment time. And so I'm nervous about it because I don't know if he's going to be able to fill it. And when he filled it this time, he had to put like a piece where the back of the tooth would be to like frame the tooth because there's no back part of the tooth. <laughs> if you can relate to this and you know what I mean, let me know. Because I know it sounds like, what does she mean? They got to put a thing to frame the tooth or make a back part of the tooth. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned that he may not be able to fill it this time. Because the filling, I mean, it's huge. It's like a huge hole. And there's no structure. There's no back part of the tooth. And I feel like if he did the same thing again, you know, it might be another couple of years and it might just fall out again. And so I'm wondering if he's going to look at it and be like, uh, yeah, we might need to pull this out. I like having all my roots. I like having all my teeth, even though they got fillings in them. But I'm just like... <clears throat> If you like they're not their looks or a little smoky because of this outer corner shade, this is perfect. Put on a brown liner, you're good to go if you like all matte light looks. And so I am glad I'm doing this. It is new for me. And again, today is October 3rd. So by the time you see this, everything will be done, <laughs> whatever he's going to do. And in my message, I put, I'd like to have it refilled or whatever is decided is the best because I'm really thinking that he's not going to be able to, to fill it <clears throat> because it is, excuse me for that, because it is so huge. But, yeah, so if you're a lot younger than me, get anal about your teeth now. Because like I said, these fillings, some of them are like super friggin' old. And so it is just, you know, everything doesn't always stay. Oh, what are we going to do with this shade? I'm going to take this one right here, which is the Vertex. And we're going to put that on the inner corner. And you see how these don't look ashy. They're lighter than I like, but they don't look dusty or ashy. Is this one going to look dusty? Yeah. <laughs> this one looks a little dusty. That's this shade right here. And so I, yeah, I'm just really nervous. And the reason why I didn't, I've never liked going to the dentist when I was younger. My dentist now at the VA hospital is amazing. And he knows how to unlock my jaw if it locks, which is great. Because um, when I was younger, when I was a kid, and my mom would take us to the dentist, they would have to give me like four different shots to even numb my mouth. And the needles hurt too. And so I never liked that process. And when I got older, I'm, I'm like, look, if you can just put me to sleep, you can do everything you need to do and be over with it because it just takes so long for me to, to get numb. And that's why I never liked it. But this dentist is pretty good. That doesn't look too bad, but I don't like that shade on me. So now we just have this shade here. Um, I wonder how to look for brow bone. This is not the right brush for that because it's not tapered. I don't think this is gonna look right as a brow bone. What we're gonna do we're going to take this. I just grabbed it at random. This is MAC Color Excess, and the shade is Stage 5 Clinger. And <clears throat> you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to... It looks like liner on my lower lash line already because of the darkness. We want, if I can find the gold one real quick... Yep, here it is. We're going to put this under there since we're going to put that mustardy shade under here. So that's my story for the day. It's just being nervous about what he's going to do. And when he does work before, when he has done work before, you know, he'll tell me, let me know if you need the rest or like raise your hand or something because you can't talk because your mouth is like, you know, nah. And so I would tell him, if my jaw locks, just do everything you need to do and unlock it when, when you're done. 
because it's painful before it locks because I can feel it trying to shift and then I'm trying to not let it shift. And so then like when it locks and then they, un which is uncomfortable. And then when they unlock it, that hurts. And then when it locks again, that hurts again. Then they unlock it and that hurts again. So I'm just like, if it locks, just leave it, take your time and do whatever you need to do. And then when you're done, you know, then unlock it. And so, and I tell him that every time and he does do that. We are going, now going to take, we're not going to take stage five cleaner. We're going to take, actually, we're just going to pull this gray here. <clears throat> this is NYX Retractable Eyeliner, and this was a NYX Retractable Eyeliner as well. And we're going to put this on our lower and upper waterline. And so he is good about that, because I'm just like, it's very traumatizing to my jaw uh, when it locks and it wants to shift and all of that. Um, but I know the work he does needs to be done, so... <sighs> Yeah, so that's it for that. And so I had a dentist before who didn't know how to unlock it. So I'm laying there with my mouth wide open and the hygienist is just like patting me on my arm. Like, it'll be okay. Because the dentist had to go next door, the next office over and get a different dentist to come and unlock my jaw. So I'm just laying there like, and tears are like streaming down my face. And the dental hygienist was just patting me on the shoulder. You're doing great. And I'm thinking, what else can I do but lay here with my mouth open? <laughs> like, what? But she was really good. So what I'm saying is my dental care at the VA hospital, and even when I was in the military, has been really good. My dentist has been really good. And the dentist I had that didn't know how to unlock my jaw, when he left, they gave me the dentist I have now, which is the one that came and unlocked my jaw back then. So I'm like, I am happy to have you. Like, you do not need to leave and <laughs> find someone to unlock my jaw. <laughs> and so I'm laughing, not because it's funny, but it's just like... I'm nervous because, and I know it'll be okay. And then I'm like, if they have to pull it, it's all winded back. You can't see it. But then I'm concerned about, you know, my other roots shifting. I am 53. So it's like, you know, a lot of people I know are missing teeth. But then I know a lot of people my age and older who are not missing teeth. So it's nothing to aspire to do or nothing to be proud of. I mean, it just happens. You know, we have different um, teeth and structures and you know what's going on because I know some people they have really fragile teeth and stuff just be just cracking but um anyway what, we, what are we going to do this shade we're putting underneath that's why I put that there so let me get a different brush we're going to take this is a blend bunny brush and we're going to take this shade here which is a plutonium this is a really different look for me y'all oh my gosh so we're going to take excuse me for that nasty snort so this is that shade and we're going to put this I am so weird how I use my viewfinder. I see this puffing up as a mirror. When I have two mirrors down here and I have the palette mirror. But it's just a habit for me to like look up here where you are, even though I'm not looking at you unless I look right here. It's just a habit. And I keep saying I'm gonna do things different. Or at least, you know, use the mirrors down here, which I do use now for I almost hit myself an eyeball when I do my lid shades. But for under here, it's just easier. But this would be easy too. Especially since I'm already holding the palette. This is a closer view. Wow, this is shiny. <laughs> you know what I'm concerned about using the mirror in the palette is I don't want it to create a shadow. Like this, I see a shadow on my face and this I don't. And so that's what I'm concerned about. And I want you to see what I'm doing where when I'm looking up here, I know you can see versus like if I end up way down here, like are you gonna be able to see the shadow being put on i'm starting to sweat so that is that is this am i tearing my eyes are tearing <clears throat> and i could feel it getting wet like right here why is this tearing and it's tearing upward i could feel it wet right here in the crease this side no but since we pat it the other side yeah so this is super i don't like it um <laughs> I like the look. It's just, I like darker. We're going to take gray. No, we're not. We're going, we haven't, no, that's dipped down. We're going to take Macro Violet Max Fluid Line. This. Uh, so we use those four shades. <laughs> Why am I sweating? So this is Macro Violet to Purple. We're going to put this on our upper lash line of course i realized yesterday when i did the look 
with this, I, I realized how much I really like this liner brush. And I know I use the melt ones a lot, particularly when I use the melt liners because I am able to get a thinner line than I usually am with other brushes. And I went too thick. There's like a hump right here. So I'm making this side thicker just so it'll be even all the way across, which is still kind of not. Hmm. So we're going to just add more here. I don't know why I came up way higher than my lash line. Hmm. And I was just saying about getting a thick line and how much I like this brush and, and then I mess up. But we're going to roll with it. I think this liner is a good choice because this is a light look. So if you're okay with matte looks, they're not their looks. I do like how these shades show up on me, except that inner corner shade, because <clears throat> it was a little dusty, but since we only put a little bit just on the inner corner, it was fine. See, now you see how thin this is? <laughs> this is what I was going for over here, and it's super thick. So I'm going to have to make this eye thicker just to match the other side. But this is what I was trying to do. And I think maybe either the angle of my hand or just talking. Because this is what I did, how it came like high up in the middle. And because I don't have a lot of mobile lid space, when I do a liner, upper lash line liner that's thick, when I look at you, you cannot see my mobile lid. The only mobile lid you see is just this inner corner piece right there. So that's why I prefer to do a thin line. So you can still see my mobile lid shades. Also, that's why I take my lid shades all the way up. Because if you can't see them on a mobile lid, like now you can't see them on my mobile lid. You still see them like up here. And I'm feeling like I want to put something under my brow bone. Because that just looks plain and bland. But... What can I put there? I don't know. From in this palette, I don't know anyway. And I just messed up that wing. I like this little wing. What the hell did I do? I am like seriously sweating. And I did turn my thermostat down. Uh, I slept good today. I think because I was distressed about what they may need to do to fix my tooth tomorrow. And so I think I just wanted to wanted to avoid <laughs> thinking about it. But I did sleep really good. I woke up around, well, I wake up every hour and a half or so anyway. But I watched a few videos while I was in bed on my phone and then went back to sleep. I'm just making this bigger because the other side is bigger. Thank you for being here. If you're still with me and you're enjoying me babbling about my teeth, go ahead and thumbs up. Or if you're not... Or if you're one of them people like, don't tell me jack about teeth. Because <laughs> some people are like, don't mention it. Like, no. For some people, it's traumatizing. And it was for me for a long time. And it took for me to have a good dentist to realize it's just a necessary evil. To, you know, because I do want to keep my teeth as long as possible. So what needs to be done needs to be done. I don't like the wing. But that's what we got. I, I'm, I don't know if I still want to take radiant light under my eyes. Yeah, we're going to take radiant light under the eyes. And actually, we're going to... Is it in... Um, no, it's not in Tiger. But I do have it in... <clears throat> excuse me. A single. And so we're going to take that because... Mm-hmm. Drop my eye primer. We're going to take this same brush. And we're going to pat that here. And so, no radiant light, radiant light. And so, because it does have that sheen to it, because it's radiant, this eye is tearing. It's wet under here. It's always just this one eye. It could be worse. could be both, right? So, it does add, like, a radiance to it. And we're going to do all of that, because then we're also going to put this all over the face, too, even though we have dim light all over the face. So, this is just a really simple, easy, all matte look. Um, popping a shimmer somewhere would be really nice. But I, re I really just wanted to finally use that last row of shades to see what I felt about them. Because I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do with this palette. Because <clears throat> I don't, excuse me, I don't use it often. And my thought was to use it with Mothman, which when I did, I really liked it. But other than that, like, I don't use this palette. I don't use these shades. And so I like stuff to be used. I need to do a lip. <clears throat> excuse me. I do like to use palettes that I have. 
And so I'm just kind of going through like some thought process. This is wet under here. Do you see this? Why? I don't know if, if mm, let me slow down. I don't know if it was from when I first put that yellow underneath and I was saying how it puffed up and then I leaned back and was kind of letting it do its thing. Maybe that's what it is and that got into my eye. We're going to be simple. This might be too light. We're not going to use that. We're just going to use sweet mouth. You know what? Let's use um a palograph gloss. I have two. Let's just take this one. This one is bronze Venus. I'm going to put it right over top of chapstick. Since this look is so light, I'm just going to keep it all light. This is not my type of look at all. I do like it though. It's just not my preference. And you saw everything does did go on really well. <clears throat> I want something up here. I'm going to take that brush and I'm going to use a domed brush, not that brush. And we're just going to just do small circular motions just to bring these shadows up. I was going to say colors. Because it just looks like there's a line there. And so even doing this little bit, taking a brush with no shadow on it and just blending it. So this is blended. This is not blended. So it's a slight difference. I think it's a good difference. And seeing this, it's not like, ooh. But this, I just think, looks a little bit better. And there really is not another shadow in this palette to put there. And again, I just wanted to use that last row. So I do have some thoughts. Um, I, I'm not going to get into them in this video because I'm trying to figure out what to declutter, what not to declutter, and what I can possibly pair. So I, I foresee me doing some more experiments in the future to help me figure out what I'm going to keep and use and not because I don't want to have stuff if I'm not using it. And even though, as I said, I seldom use this palette, my purpose in keeping it was to use with Mothman because it did pair really well with Marth Mothman's Marthman, Mothman. So that'll be it for this look. Very simple, very easy, very natural, like at all. Um, you know what I'm thinking to do some graphic liner, <laughs> like just something, but we're not, we're going to keep it easy. We're going to keep it light. We're going to keep it just the way it is. And <clears throat> excuse me. And yeah, so that's just going to be it. Very simple, very easy, all matte look. They're not there. Kind of want to be a little smoke over here. The shadows do blend like really nice together. So the only shadow in this palette, I don't like how it looks on me, is this one. And that wouldn't even look good for me for brow bone because it did make me look ashy. I am sweaty. So I do believe this is a keeper, but then part of me is thinking like, I do have a, an empty quint from Natasha. I forget what was in there. So I was thinking, even if I just take out the deeper shades in here, because as I said, since I put these in here, I have not used them. So it's like, why are you here? But I don't like having holes in the palette. So I was thinking of taking out this one, that, this, and these two. Wait, that's six, that's five. One, two, three, four, five. So I was thinking of taking those out and putting them in here to use with Mothman because I don't, even though I did like how this one looked too, I just hit myself in the face. Even though I did like how this one showed up too, it was a little light for my liking, but I did really like how this one showed up and these two and this one and that, but that's two, four, two, four, five, six. This one is neither here nor there because even for lower lash line, it's like, you're not there. But it may be good for buffing out another shade. Um, what I did do was also, I have an empty Lethal Cosmetics 12 pan. I took out one of the Natasha Denona shadows. It fits in here. It's maybe like one teeny, eeny, itsy millimeter off. But this, these, these shadows fit in here. So then I'm thinking maybe if I just keep all 12 of these and just put them in the Lethal one. But then I have a thing where I want Natasha to be a Natasha. And I do want another lethal palette with shadows in it. And so I'm not sure. And so 
I'm not sure because this I know I'm not going to use. This one is neither here nor there. Even though it was a little lighter than I liked, it did not make me look dusty or ashy, which was good. And neither did this shade right here. But I know I wouldn't use this often. I wouldn't use this often. I know I wouldn't use this again. So that's already three shades down. Um, yeah, so that's something I'm thinking about. And also what I'm thinking... I'm going to do a video of looks of what I'm thinking because, and I'll do that after this video actually, because I don't want to take up too much time because this was about the eye look, just on an all matte simple eye look and getting it done with the Trio Chrome palette from Natasha Denona. So we're going to end this here. I'll click off and click on, <coughs> excuse me, and talk about my thoughts. Um, yeah, so that'll be it for this video. Thank you for bearing with me because I know I was talking about quite a few different things. Let me know if you have Trio Chrome. It really surprised me. It did not make me look dusty or ashy except just this one shade. And again, these are not original to this palette. These are from Heather Austin Adept Cosmetics palette. Haven't used them yet since they've been in here. So I, I, I would be okay getting rid of them because I never use them. And, yeah. So thank you for being here. Um, let me know if you can relate to the dental stuff. <laughs> let me know if you have Trio Chrome, what your thoughts are about it. Let me know if this is your vibe. Easy, monochromatic, all matte look with a pop and liner with better wings than what I did. And just having a simple face situation and a simple look. If this is your go-to, let me know. And that'll be it for this video. Thank you for being here. And um, I'm like, what is it? <laughs> Self-acceptance and self-love that is the crazy troll nation way. Thank you, and you will see me soon.